Well, hey guys, um, I know I had did a countdown for 12 o'clock, but that is not going to work out. Like I said, there's going to be some kind of, sometimes there's going to be schedule changes and stuff where I have to go on earlier or later or not going to be able to make it. So, um, so I'm just going to start right now. And just so you guys know on Instagram Live, whether you're watching now or later, um, these are going to be uh, on YouTube. I'm also recording them concurrently so I can put them on and you could watch them anytime uh, you want. But the study is through the book of Proverbs and we're going to finish up uh, Proverbs chapter 1 uh, today and uh, Proverbs chapter 1. And let's just pray and then we'll get into Proverbs 1.20 this morning. Well, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you hold your uh, word higher than your name. God, that it's your truth. It's your blueprint for living. It's how you speak to us, Lord. And we pray that you would speak to us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20, it says, uh, let me read it. It says, wisdom calls aloud outside. She raises her voice in the open square. She cries out in the chief concourses. At the openings of the gates in the city, she speaks her words. So wisdom's call, basically. Wisdom calls aloud outside. What in the world does that mean? Basically, Solomon calls wisdom a she. Like she, wisdom, offers her guidance and help to the world. Um, her cry is loud, yet it's often ignored. It's like when God speaks to you. Sometimes we know it's the Lord. We know it's the Holy Spirit impressing things upon our hearts. At the same time, we ignore that voice. Sometimes, oftentimes in this world, people ignore the wisdom of God. And they do what they want to do rather than do what God wants them to do. Right? So people let, oftentimes, they let the noise of the world um, down, drown out the voice of God. Right, because it can be loud. Voices can be loud. Opinions can be loud. The news can be loud. Um, and so I love what it says. It says, outside in the open square, the chief concourses, the gates in the city. And so really, this shows that wisdom shows herself to everyone in every place. Like God's wisdom is available to anyone, to everyone. And as we take in God's wisdom, we get to give out God's wisdom. Not only take it in and hide it in our own heart and learn and grow and flourish in the faith, but we take it in and then we get to, uh, and then we get to give it out. Love it. But it's available. God's wisdom is available. And we get to be sort of um, conduits, uh, conduits of his wisdom. It says she offers her help basically to anyone and everyone in every place. And so people need, here's the thing, people need to give attention to God's wisdom and God's words. And sometimes you're the only one, I'm the only one, that can be able to relay God's word, God's wisdom, to other people. And so that is our call, that's our charge, that's our exhortation from the Lord Jesus before he ascended to heaven, gave the great commission, calling us to get out there and let people know about the good news. So God wants all his children to follow him and be led by his voice, by his ways, by his wisdom. And so what's next? Well, in verse 22, chapter 1 of Proverbs says, How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? For scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn at my rebuke. Surely I will pour out my spirit on you. I will make my words known to you, because I have called and you refused. I've stretched out my hand. And no one regarded, because you disdained all my counsel and will not and will have none of my rebuke. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your terror comes, when your terror comes like a storm, and your uh, destruction comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you. Man, <laughs> so remember the simple ones need wisdom, and they need help the most. The simple ones referred to in Proverbs are those who are gullible and just will believe anything that they hear. It says, how long will you love simplicity? Meaning, how long will, will those who reject wisdom keep their minds closed? Some people say, oh, you're a Christian, so you're closed-minded. But it's actually, actually the opposite. We're open-minded to what God has for us, to what he says. We're open-minded to the truth that is from him. Some people just constantly reject wisdom's 
help. God is trying to get their attention. And you know, right now with this whole uh, coronavirus, I think God is trying to get our attention. He's trying to get the attention of the church to rise up and to fully, finally fully live for him. And he's trying to get the attention of those who don't believe to actually trust in him. And that it's an interesting statistic, 21.5% uh, of unbelievers are actually tuning in to live feeds for churches. And then those people who would never set foot in the church, they're actually questioning, they're wondering like, what's going on here? What's the truth? And they're searching for truth. And so they're tuning in to these services to hear about God. And so what an opportunity for us, but, but then there's the opposite. Those who scorn, like Solomon talks about, those who scorn describe those who reject God's wisdom. They'd rather walk in their own ways and their own will rather than God's ways and God's will. And they suffer, they struggle, and they don't realize, but they need to, that they're putting themselves through that struggle. Because they're not adhering to God's ways, they're doing their own thing. But the, the source of this outlook is pride, right? Scorn, scorners think they know everything. You ever met someone, they just, they just, they already know it all? You don't have to tell them anything, they know it all. At least they think they know it all. Those are scorners, you know? Scorners are those who think they know everything. And fools are people who are ignorant of the truth, because they're stubborn. They have hard hearts like Pharaoh. He had a hard heart, right? And so, so far in chapter one, the ungodly progression, here's the ungodly pro progression in Proverbs chapter one. So first being gullible, then becoming a fool, then being a scorner. And so it's a progression downward. It's a spiral. It's a vicious cycle for those who are wicked. And Solomon says, turn at my rebuke, Surely I will pour out my spirit on you. So willingness is needed in order to turn from foolishness to God. Away from foolishness and towards God. And so willingness, we need to be willing. You know, remember Jesus couldn't do many mighty works in his own town because of unbelief, because the people were unwilling to listen to Jesus and to believe who he actually was, the Messiah. So he couldn't do many mighty works there. Willingness is needed in order to turn from foolishness. Wisdom brings rebuke. So the question is, will the scorners respond to God's wisdom? Will they respond to his wisdom? And the description in these verses has to do with the spirit of wisdom. It's essence. Not the Holy Spirit, but it's essence. And so... Uh, it says, those who refuse wisdom will be laughed at by wisdom because of their calamity. Okay, so the result of rejecting wisdom is destruction. Just plain and simple. And, uh, and we go on, verse 28 says, Then they will call on me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but they will not find me, because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Verse 30. They would have none of my counsel and despise my every rebuke. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with the fool with their own fancies. Verse 32. For the turning away of the simple will slay them, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. Verse 33 of chapter 1 of Proverbs says, But whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of evil. So here are more consequences of rejecting wisdom. It's not smart to only seek wisdom when difficulty comes. It's kind of like those people who are like, everything's fine. I don't need God. I don't need anyone. But when difficulties come, they seek those who believe. They seek God. They ask you for prayer. And so now that there's a calamity, now they want help. It's in the valleys that it's easy to cry out for help. But it's when we're on the mountaintops where it's kind of like we start to forsake God and think we're fine without him when that's not the case at all, right? We don't just use wisdom when we need it and then reject it when all is well, right? We seek God continually. We ask for his wisdom every day, at least we should. It says, and did not choose the fear of the Lord. So to reject wisdom is to reject God. The, the wisdom of this world is foolishness to God. Remember Paul said that in Galatians chapter one? It's true. Real wisdom, true wisdom, the source of wisdom is from God, is from the Lord. And we get to take it in 
and then give it out. And it says they eat the fruit of their own way. So rejecting wisdom equals being slain or being destroyed. How many of us know if we aren't in our word, if we're not seeking God in the morning before we even start our day, things can be difficult, right? Things can be hard. We can let everything get to us. Our attitude is way off. Man, but when I start the day just reading the word or praying or both and just seeking God, Lord, this day is yours, I, in a sense, can sail through the day rather than struggling through the day. Because I'm like, this, is not, this day is not about me. It's about the Lord. And he gives us the right countenance. He gives us the right heart. And he lifts us up and prepares us for what is going to be before us, ahead of us. And so... Rejecting wisdom equals being slayed or being destroyed, Solomon's saying. Sounds dark, but the point is the importance of using wisdom from day to day. And the key phrase here is their own way. They're going their own way, right? Sinners end will not be good if they are doing things their own way instead of doing things God's way. Because it's all about God's way. It's all about his sovereignty, what he wants to do. But at the same time, we have to have a willingness to do what he says. You know, Jesus, when he called the disciples, uh, particularly the fishermen, he said, follow me. Pretty simple. Just follow me. Why? Because he knows best. Why? Because he's a savior. Why? Because he knows which way he's going. Why? Because he knows which way we need to go. And so listen to this last phrase. It says, whoever listens to me will dwell safely. So those who listen, this is sort of the conclusion, those who listen to wisdom's call will be secure without fear of evil. And isn't that what we want, especially in today's day? We want to be secure without evil, right? Without the fear of evil. We don't have to fear. Why? Well, because God's got it under control. Just have faith in Him. We don't have to look at our circumstances. We just need to look at our Savior. And so whoever listens to me will dwell safely. So listen to wisdom's call and then you'll be secure. So many people right now are insecure and they're unsure. And so we get to take our security that we get from God and we get to share that with them to help comfort their heart. You know, in Corinthians, Paul said in the beginning there, he said, you know, with the comfort that God gives you, now you take that comfort and you comfort believers. You comfort others. And what a progression. That's really what we should be doing, right? Taking the comfort from God, taking the security from God, taking um, just resting in Him and taking that and sharing it with others. Hey, listen, you can be secure. You can have rest. You can have hope. You can have help. You can be okay in the midst of a storm. Here's the truth and here's how. And then you share the gospel with them. It's amazing. So those who listen to wisdom's call will be secure and without fear of evil. You don't need to fear. I don't need to fear as long as we're in the word of God, in the truth, as long as we're walking by faith, believing that God knows what he's doing. No one knows anything right now. I mean, like, people are trying to figure it out in this world right now. Like, the social distancing, everything. I mean, we're all trying to, everyone's trying to figure it out. You know, even the professionals, the government, everyone. We're all trying to figure it out. But listen, God has it figured out. He knows what's going on. And he knows, I, I believe this is a wake-up call for the church. I believe this is a wake-up call for those who don't believe. I believe God is going to use this... Uh, tragedy, this, uh, this moment in history, this pandemic for his purposes. I think he'll use it. He can use evil for good, right? He can use technology to get the gospel out. You know, the enemy can use it for evil, which he's been doing for years, but now all of a sudden God is using it for good, to get God's word out. People who aren't tuning in before unbelievers are now listening to what the Bible has to say. People are open now. As the world gets dimmer, our light can shine brighter, and we need to reflect the light of Christ to people, to let them know about Him. Not about us. It's not about us. It's about Him. And so, man, we don't have to fear evil. We can have security in following God's wisdom, the source of wisdom. Not our own. You know, to God, the wisdom of the world is foolishness, but His wisdom, it's what leads us, what guides us, what helps us, what takes away the fear, the anxiety, um, the worry, and it, it replaces an unsettled heart with a settled heart because we're following God's ways, not our own ways. And so Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 1, this was verses 20 to 33, so um, God bless you guys. Hey everyone, hope you're doing well, and hope you have a, 
a great rest of your Monday. Stay in the Word. Stay focused on Jesus. You know what He's doing. God bless.